What's up, guys? Welcome back to Kind of Funny's Batman in Review. That's right. We are ranking and reviewing every theatrically released Batman movie. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by one of the coolest dudes in video games, Greg Miller. Your angel of death awaits, Tim Geddes. Mm, mm. The nitro rifle, Andy Cortez. Tim, your angel of death awaits. <laughs> Andy, producer. you have to do something original. Don't always just copy what I say. Damn it. God. Producer, Nick Scarpino. Everyone's angel of death awaits. Uh, nice <laughs> original, Nick. Nice. Thanks, guys. And the big dog, Kevin Coelho. Batman! There yeah, it is. That's it. what we needed. That's Absolutely the energy we need right it. now. Ladies and gentlemen, you could watch this show live on twitch.tv slash games, or you could watch it later on youtube.com slash kindoffunny. If you want to listen to it, guess what? You can just search your favorite podcast service for Kind of Funny Reviews, and we'll be right there for you. If you want to get the show ad-free, you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunny, just like <laughs> Muhammad Muhammad and Al Tribesman, Momo and Al, doing the best. Doing Thank the you, most. Momo and Al, for supporting us for so long. Today, they, they deserve their own sitcom, Momo and Al. I really do. That. I mean, what channel? You got to be oh, original. Uh, it's on the your angel on ABC family. family. Yeah. ABC family. <laughs> <laughs> anyways momo now thanks for all the support you've been with us a long time absolutely you guys are is that original enough ain't it for you andy yeah that's you piece of garbage <laughs> that's good so on mondays here we are doing batman in review and on thursdays we're doing conjuring in review very excited for that annabelle is up next <laughs> uh, but today we're talking about batman mask of the phantasm what a cool word very cool. Like, fuck it. You know, any, anytime there's an asm in a word, I'm just a fan of it. Yeah. It's Do they cool. ever make reference to the fact that the bad guy in this is called the phantasm? It's not, you know, like, oh, no, it's the phantasm, right? He's just, they just decided, <laughs> they wrote the movie and they're like, what should we call this Batman? Uh, what do you think? And then someone's Ghost like, "Hello, oh. Christmas pass." Yeah, exactly. The death of Chucky Soul, and like that's that's lame. How about mask of the phantasm? Cool. Yeah. Does he have to? Look, is he gonna find a mask at some point? No. Is the mask gonna play mask. anything in? No. What do you I'll mean? It's a big deal. You mask? don't know the whole time. It's Andrea. Well, Andrea let me ask Renee. you guys this question. Now, I never, I never played this game, but Majora's Mask was that oh. something that you found in the Legend of Zelda? Like, was that like a thing that you needed yes. to beat fucking Ganondorf at the end? Yeah, the dwarf. So, like in this, I always watch. I was like, Steven Mask of the Fantasy. He's gonna find it. That's gonna be the key to the MacGuffin that he needs. No, it's just a cool name. I'll, I'll cool tell you what, though. Name. Is this not the most iconic VHS cover? Jesus Shit. Christ. Right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean. Just starting it right off, the, the the design of this. I mean, granted, it's based off of the animated show, of course, but the actual look of the movie is stunning. The art is is gorgeous. I wish I don't know. You guys probably watched it on Netflix. I wish they had a better transfer because cool. the transfer of this for me was just terrible. It's rough, man. It's yeah, very, real, very real, tough, real, real smudgy. It's like uh, someone just someone randomly just like took it, scaled it up by like a hundred percent in photo or not not Photoshop, but Premiere, and then just quickly exported it because the grain <laughs> is huge. It, I wish they'd go back and clean so this up because the movie itself is stunning. It's like as if someone just pointed a camera at like a movie theater. <laughs> like, <it> was, <laughs> Some, like, I'm not kidding at parts, and you would expect to see this in live action, but there's moments there are shots that are out of focus where like the characters look out of focus, and I'm like. That's not even possible unless you drew them <laughs> not out even of draw it that way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I so mean, we're talking about Mask of the Phantasm released on December 24th, 1993, making it the first film set in the DC animated universe. Directed by Eric Radomski and Bruce Tim. Eric Radomski is a producer best known as co-creator and co-producer of Batman the Animated Series. He also acted as producer for Freakazoid, Shaolin Showdown, Shaggy and Scooby-Doo, Get a Clue, Ultimate Spider-Man. Avengers Assemble, Hulk and the Agents of Smash, and Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Bruce, Bruce Tim is an American artist, character designer, animator, writer, producer, and actor. He's best known for his contributions building the modern DC Comics animated franchise, the DC Animated Universe. And so, oh, man. Did this awesome. come out before the show? No. No. When did the show Came come alongside. out? Like, because I always thought the show was 94, but that might be... 92. 92? Okay. Yeah. A uh, budget of six million dollars and a box office of five point eight million dollars. It did oh, not no. do well, not do well at all. But there's a lot of reasons for that. Originally planned as a direct-to-video release, Warner Brothers gave Mask of the Phantasm a theatrical release, condensing its production into a strenuous eight-month schedule. Ooh. The film was released through the studio's family entertainment division uh, to positive reviews from critics who praised the stylized animation, voice performances, story, and music. While the animators were thrilled and extremely grateful for this decision, this left them with less than a year of production time and scrambling to convert the aspect ratio to widescreen. Due to the de decision to release it in theaters on short notice, the film failed at the box office. After its release on home video, it became financially 
financially successful. Its success led to two direct-to-video standalone sequels, Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero in 1998, and The Mystery of the Batwoman in 2003. Until the limited release of Batman the Killing Joke in 2016, Mask of the Phantasm was the only animated Batman film to be given a theatrical release. There you wow. go. Yeah. I think I saw this in theaters, Greg. Did you see this in theaters? No, I didn't see Batman Mask of the Phantasm for years and years and years and years. I watched the animated series uh, religiously in Grandma Miller's living room, but for some reason or another, I never went off and watched this. I watched it I don't even know, probably a decade ago or something like that. But that was the first and only time I had seen it before last night. That's yeah. very shocking. Greg, you know a decade is longer than, like, 2010 is a decade ago. I know. That's what I'm saying. I know. I know. Yeah. I, I, know, I, know, it's, 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 you know, I did the same thing, Greg. You know, I saw it like 10 years ago, but really it was like 95. 20. Yeah. yeah. No, as a kid, I never, I, ne- I don't know what it was. It never, I never went to see this as a movie. I guess my parents just never bought it was the thing. And so I never did. I don't remember it even being in theaters. Like, I, I just thought it was always a straight to home release only because, I feel like every family member had that case, VHS, had that VHS yeah. case, yeah. It's yeah. funny because I think I remember the only reason I remember seeing it in theaters, and I could be misremembering this, but I, but there's a shot at the very beginning, maybe the first ten minutes, when we first see uh, the phantasm and Chucky, the, the car goes Chucky off and the soul. thing kills the guy, and then he look and Batman looks over and sees the like uh, the phantasm disappear, and he runs over, and I'll never forget. I was like, because I hadn't seen this in the animated show before, he puts his hand on the brick and like leans leans over to look and the camera dollies past him and it's a very very cinematic shot and i just remember the i remember the sound in the theater being like very quiet when that happened i was like this is the coolest thing ever i hope they make 15 more of these and release them and they never well, we, did uh, well i mean nick we also had that stellar 3d fly through of gotham which was like you know seeing 3d in that way was kind of mind-blowing at the time oh where, yeah you know you're just not sort of used to that thing you're, i mean obviously it's just all primitive shapes it's just rectangles sure. with red lighting on them but, but it kind of works it was still super sick yeah, yeah. so so they made that actually for the cartoon and they were going to use it in just the cartoon normally but because of the truncated production schedule they're just like oh no, no no hold on just let's put that in the movie and then they never went back and like kept adding it to the show oh which is like a weird choice because yeah it was one of those things where it actually went the other way where it like seems like it would be oh that was made for the movie but it was actually made for the show the oh, iconic red sky yeah. yeah. So yeah, cool. I I think I mean just just taking a step back, just talking about the art direction behind this. Just Gotham in the animated show is so cool, and the fact that you have it here, it's just so tall. It's so vertical. Everything is just tall and narrow and claustrophobic, and you have it's so deco. It, it's such a rad concept for what they the, the production design what they chose for this that then echoed I think uh, largely for uh, the Superman cartoon because I think Batman came out first, right, Greg? Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah it's, it's, this first, started then, the animated series started the universe that would become Super right. animated series, which would become Justice League, Justice League Unlimited. Right, and that that has that sort of retro modern feel to it, like that 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 past future feel to it, which I always thought was really really cool. Um, and I, I I would love to see them do that in a movie one day, which I guess Tim Burton's kind of did that, but not really because Tim Burton still have like '80s cars and stuff like that. But just the idea of like in this we see sort of like the inspiration where the Batmobile came from, and that little awesome. touch of him seeing at the world's fair where it's like this is what the car of the future is going to look like you know it's like it's like what tomorrowland used to look like tim before they gutted it and made star wars land you know and it was like everything was that that cool retro future look yeah it's really fun for me dude i really appreciated this movie like i i don't know that i've ever actually seen it all the way through like there's enough of it that i'm like i must have when i was younger but like it definitely there was things in this that i was like huh didn't expect that didn't remember that at all and i often confuse this with the sub-zero one which i definitely did see uh, when I was I've never so seen a little that older for that one. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's Batman not versus that great. Mr. or Sub-Zero or Mr. Freeze or whatever it is. Because there was a bunch of them that are just Batman versus Dracula, Batman this, Batman that. And I, the, to me, there was, I, and I could be wrong, but you guys correct me. It's like the Lego Batman movie versus just the normal Lego movies where like they're not really trying on these. These are going straight to video for kids, right? Well, the Lego Batman that's not a good example of that. Shit. But <laughs> no, I'm the saying Lego, the Lego Bat, the Lego Batman movie would have been like the because there's a bunch of Lego movies that are shitty. Right? I see you're saying. I see you're yeah. saying they're not yeah, shitty. Like, no, they're good. There's kid this movies. Was like, kid movies. Well, this was like the this was like a triple A like let's try to make a cool cinematic sure. movie that we're gonna put out, and then the rest of them were like the normal Lego movies is what I'm trying to say. Where it's like yeah. Ninjago, you're like I don't expect gotcha. this to be. Well, gotcha. that's also gotcha, an example gotcha, gotcha. of the good one. But <laughs> oh, was that a good one? <laughs> but I get what you're saying. There are Lego Batman movies that are not the Lego Batman movie that are definitely lesser than they're not theatrical experiences. Yes. I really appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> this, this point anymore. The, 
um, I appreciated this movie so much for kind of just being a standalone thing that uh, you don't need to have watched the animated show. You kind of just get in there and like the story is super simple and it's short enough. Like the runtime is only an hour, hour 16, 16 minutes, right? which yeah. is great. And yeah, I feel like it accomplishes a lot with that time. The amount of flashbacks and the use of flashbacks, I think is really cool, clever and like builds Batman's backstory in a, in a way that like doesn't need to be the same thing we've seen a million times. And the villains are cool and the cast around him is cool. It's just, I, I enjoyed this a lot. And I think I, that it, more than not, it really worked for me. I, I, I'm, I have such a high respect for this movie, but I just did not love it a whole lot this time around. And I think it's because I had, you know, that I had such nostalgia for it. And I remember it being like the best of the best, greatest thing, greatest animated thing ever. And it, it still kind of, it felt short for me this time where I, I, again, I respect, you know, all the acting is great. And, you know, you have such a, such a, it's such a high level of animation and cool environments and characters and everything like that. But all the flashback stuff and uh, I don't know, it, it just, it just didn't hold up that great for me as much as I would have liked it to. I'm with Andy where I, I came into it expecting like, all right, I like, I, you know, love the animated series, even though I haven't watched it obviously in years and years and years either. Mm-hmm. And Kevin Conroy is so good. And Mark Hamill is so good. And we're back to it. We're going to get in. Here. I mean, like even uh, Dana Delaney or uh, Delaney who does Lois, but uh, in this movie is Andrea uh, oh, Beaumont. Does, she she doesn't did Lois. Yeah. That's she awesome. does Lois, the animated uh, Superman. That's animated awesome. Series, I you know, never that put way. that together. Uh, I think, you know, the performances are great. It's, you know, it, all this is put together by Andrea Romano. If you don't know her, this uh, star of DC animated universes. And I don't mean like a literal star. I mean, behind the scenes star. star. She's the one who gets the voices together and, you know, directs them and casts them and works Show with all of them coming. to make it great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was the same thing of like, I got into it and we were going and I was just like, oh, like, it's just not hitting the way I wanted to. Even like, you know, you forget that we've had what's this is 93, but 92 is when it got introduced. Right. So we've had more than 20, almost 30 years of Mark Hamill as Joker. Yeah. So then to hear his Joker here and be like, oh, yeah, you're still figuring it out. And granted, this, you know, your Joker is in a different place in his timeline or whatever. But it's like, oh, right. Like, OK, like this isn't all the way there. And even, uh, you know. Kevin Conroy, who I think is such a fantastic Batman and I love so mm-hmm. much. It, I, I Again, I was here like waiting for it and l- waiting for like the big Batman moment of like, you know, even if and I didn't have to do the exact speech, but his I am the night I am vengeance. I am Batman and that never got that you get a it, it's similar to the other Batman. I think we've seen from Keaton in uh, uh, 89, right? We get this Batman that is to some extent unsure of himself, not to the level of, you know, not knowing what he's doing, but wrestling with this, which is an interesting conundrum of can he have a normal life? Can he fall in love? And then even when Andrea comes back into the picture, what does that mean for him going forward? Yeah, I think that's one of the things that I find actually fascinating about this. And I think it's uh, from trivia from last week. One of the things that I, that I think Keaton himself wanted to see a little bit more in the Tim Burton films, which is that to have Batman have some sort of like conflict or character arc, sure. which we don't really get up until this point. This one, we get it in spades. We also see a little bit, a little homage to Batman, like year one, where he's running around beating up crooks and stuff. But he's like, they don't yeah. fear me. But it is interesting to think when I think back of Kevin Conroy, I think about him as probably being the pinnacle or the quintessential Batman, in my opinion. He has that forcefulness, that presence on screen, even though it's a it's a VO that he's doing that just is iconic. And you're right. It's not quite here, although I will disagree with you a little bit. I thought Hamill's Joker was I think I just think Hamill's Joker is perfect all the time. He's just got the laugh down. He has the ability to have it be like, is he crazy or is he having fun or is it a combination of both? Well, yeah, like when he's when he's fighting uh, Andrea, right, and he yeah. he gets knocked out of the table, and there's a knife for the baloney, and he grabs the baloney, he grabs the, the face with this giant thing yeah. of baloney. <laughs> um, I do also want to give a shout out to something that I, I mean, again, you just blew my mind with Dan Delaney being Lois Lane. Thank you for that, Greg. I made my made That's my mind. That's what I'm here for. I blow but you every time I can. This thanks, mom. Thanks, daddy. Um, or Anytime, baby. baby. I can't remember which one you want. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, what blew me away this time was I was like, oh my god, I never put it together, Tim. I never put it together the guy that plays the little shit finance guy who's trying to hit on dana delaney at the beginning do you know what he's from Mm -mm. that's ellis from die hard that's right Mm -mm. everyone Mm -mm. and i looked it up and i was like oh my (laughs) hans booby it's like ellis you don't know these guys they're gonna kill you and they kill more importantly he's the he's the love interest in the movie supergirl he is the love. He's the guy that's like the bow. He's supposed to be like a bow hunk in that, right? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's just like, a moron. 
when, man, when the last time you watched that? I tried watching that like two months ago, and I was like, this does not hold up. When it this came to when it came to movie. DVD, I, I I bought it, and I was like, oh man, this movie is all, even worse than I remember it being. Thank God Helen Slater had like the secret of my success and some other movies. She went on to do some to have a good career, but man, that one was a weird one. Yeah, yeah. Kev, what do you think about it? Um, I uh, this is my first time ever watching it. Uh, I wow. realized when I started watching it, uh, but uh, I really, really enjoyed it. It was weird to see all these things where I was like, oh shit, like it felt very much like a prequel to the show, and um, that, like, I don't know, it added a bunch of cool stuff where it's like, I didn't super love that they gave Joker a background that, like, you know, we, we could, you know, point at and be like, oh, so I sure. guess he was a gangster before all of the, whatever happened, but um, I... I don't know. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought, like, the story was cool and the look of everything was cool. Same thing. We had a couple of those wide shots where you see, like, the city. And it's like, man, it's so cool that, like, I wish someone else had, uh, done like, attempted to make Gotham look like this. I know that, um, uh, uh, what's his face, Burton, like, kind of had this feel. But it just, it's so cool what they can do with animations to make, like, the city look like grandiose and like old and decrepit. Anyways, yeah. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah, like like I was saying, I think this movie really works for me because it does just feel like the best the animated show has to offer, but in a condensed movie form that you don't need to watch. Like, because a lot of the animated show episodes, it's like it's 20 minutes and it's like you don't really get too much. Sometimes there's two parters or mm-hmm. maybe even three parter every once in a while. But like this kind of felt like the perfect amount of time to tell a story that is a little deeper than we would normally get. But I do think that it is, at the end of the day, still kind of like not a perfect experience where it's like there. I, I think that we look back on these animated shows a lot more fondly than we actually would feel about them if we were to watch them through today. Sure. Uh, recently, I watched a whole bunch of episodes of Batman, the animated series and X-Men, the animated series. And both of X-Men's those, it's like <laughs> it's 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 and Batman, I think, is in a much different place than X-Men. But both of them, it's like, oh, man, I want to like this more than I actually like it. Yeah. Uh, but I think that this movie kind of, to me, is just like, okay, that that proves my my thoughts about this. And it like solidifies the fact that I'm like, this is great, but we've seen things since this. Like this, I'm so happy it happened to get us where we are today, where yeah. we we're able to get stories that are deeper and to have this kind of look. And like, man, the, the visual look of it is awesome when it doesn't look smudged and, and weird. But... But yeah, it's like it is it is cool to see like the potential of what these movies can be. And I think that it fully reaches that. Yeah, I mean, to, to me, that's that's the spot on. And again, I think I think you nailed it with which is that we don't get under the red hood unless you have this right. These are all this this the animated series for me a lot of the ways. And I think Greg talk, touched on it, too, was just like that is sort of like the 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 beginning point for a lot of of um, basically like comic book like reach or comic book uh, content reaching into pop culture. And for me, like, I'll just, I'll never forget the first time I saw an ad for the animated show when I was a kid, I was like, that what opening. Oh, fuck. Like I saw, I saw a cartoon. It's coming. I'm like, this, what, this doesn't make any sense. Tim, I think, I mean, like everyone's spoiled now. Cause there's so many different amazing cartoons for that, that, you know, are, are good for kids. But back in the day, dude, this was like the commitment to that art style too, which at first I was like, that's way too simple. Cause coming off of X-Men where you, you see a still of X-Men versus a still of this, you're like, this is a, a terribly done. But then you see it in motion. You're like, Oh, they committed to this art styles. So they could do a lot more fluidity, a lot more stuff, a lot more cells. Um, and the show is just so good. And I'll tell you one thing right now. My favorite two-parter, Greg, what is it? What's my favorite two-parter? Uh, I don't know. Batman the... Ghost of Metropolis. That's Daddy right. and the baby. Oh, oh the, so when the That might have been Superman. Superman. Yeah, I was yeah, going to say, that's been, the opening. That might have been the yeah. Superman. Yeah. Well, it's not, even, it's not even an episode. It's a crossover a movie they made, yeah, that then yeah introduces all the stuff and stuff. There you go. Or it has them crossover. The end credit it. song, I never even told you, is a rare singing performance by Tia Carrera. Whoa. Good, yeah. Was that the, are you talking about the one with the nasty saxophone where it just gets mm-hmm. dirty? World's mm-hmm. finest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's I'll say this plot. also. The uh, oh, sorry, just my last little thing on this. The the, the music in this, the the iconic, fucking animated show music. Come on, can we just get a moment of silence for that? It's great, but I was it was severely lacking like yeah. the iconic theme. <laughs> I agree. Uh, we need we needed that in spades, man. We need. Yeah, well, that was the thing is they did the iconic theme in Latin or whatever in the beginning with like people singing and stuff, and it was like ah, like all right, like the the people you singing, play, you they were singing like the producers' names backwards. Is that's that a real factor? Okay. Swear to God, yeah. 
Right. Wow. Uh, Why would they do that? Na, 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 plot time. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Batman Mask of the Phantasm. So apparently they're singing. Uh, for my Netflix, it said singing in Latin, but Tim says their name's <laughs> backwards. All right, yeah. whatever. They're Same singing the Batman is. theme all weird and stuff as we go through Gotham, like we already talked about. And then we start going into one of uh, the seedy casino building. And you know, if a building says casino, it's full of dirt bags. And this one sure is. Uh, Mr. Soul is in there, Chucky Soul. And he's got a whole bunch of counterfeit money. And everybody's looking at it and they're like, yeah, you would need a super special microscope to figure this out and, like, and they're all like oh, this is really cool chucky and like yeah and like they're like but it's cool and we have all this and they're, they're having this conversation in front of a giant window like yeah you know and from the very back you see this tiny speck and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it's fucking batman he's been listening <laughs> on this entire fucking conversation he smashes the fuck in and everybody's like oh my god it's batman and so everybody runs over and they start trying to fist fight him and batman just dispatches these guys no problem Easy. and then a few of them are like wait a second we have guns they pull out their guns and batman goes under a table and they're shooting through the table but batman still just pushes the table up he fucking throws that in their faces he gets over there he's doing these kicks like, pow, pow, yeah pow. a very slow man they could they could like as he's doing the table thing just kind of like lean down and just right they, yeah they didn't play super hot they don't understand if they played super hot <laughs> yeah. dr they would know that yeah. they could you know so move true. and use the three space and get mm -hmm. under there even some pistol whip would help these guys so out great. but it's no use for them they get clowned the f out however soul he runs mr soul he takes off and he runs to a parking garage and based on how long it will take batman to get there this parking garage is about seven football fields away except that <laughs> chucky soul got immediately transported to it but he also, gets I there i want to point out i do want to point out Greg, Please. that you know gotham very very dangerous city not just because of the crime but the fact that you could be 90 stories in the sky and a walkway without any guardrails like this is a, <laughs> this is a hazard we need we need uh, what are they called osha or whatever like yeah the osha violations are happening there big time big OSHA violation but also really yeah. really cool like can we all agree that little connecting walkways between tall buildings really fucking cool very like, cool that delicate yeah, balance you know it's safety great, versus cool fashion absolutely. function i yeah, don't know exactly. it's, yeah. it's like a rivendell you know they have a lot of that too over there in rivendell Lord of the Rings. Like, where Archie? I, was. I, I thought it. you were talking about the, the Archie and Archie's Jughead from. No, R Rivendell. Uh, they made a show about no, that. No, you pronounce it Riverdale. Riverdale. Yeah, no, Riverdale. Riverdale. I know you're, mispronounc you're pronouncing it like you got stung by a bee and have an allergy. Riverdale. Jughead. Riverdale. Riverdale. I, I'm Archie and I'm in Riverdale. Wait a second. You know what I mean? That's how you're talking right now. Okay. Archie gets the Archie gets hay part. fever. Archie gets <laughs> hay fever. All right. Was that that's him blowing his nose? That was his going. I'm blowing his nose. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Oh, 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 that would be it. Remember, everybody, mm. Greg Miller for all your VO needs. All right. Mike Biffle bit the bullet. You think you can stay away from me, Corey Barlog? <laughs> Fucking get on board. <laughs> anyways uh chucky runs to a parking garage and he gets in his car and lo and behold in front of him already or maybe even before he gets in the car is uh, who he thinks is batman he's like batman how'd you get here so quick and then there's all this smoke and it, the dude walks out and it's actually the phantasm and he goes chucky soul your angel of death awaits and he's like oh fuck i don't know who this guy is but you're as crazy as batman <laughs> and he jumps in his car and then uh, maybe the guy came at him and like did stuff with his hook hand maybe he didn't i don't know but, but eventually chuck impervious to bullets yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like, lots of no reaction to him whatsoever. Even if you're wearing four police vests, you might still go like, "Ooh, you know, that's wow." It still kind of feels something right there, but impervious. Exactly. Yeah, because he got the smoke. The phantasm has smoke. And spoiler yeah. alerts, everybody, it's Andrea. That's the phantasm, all right? Because I, I was, was, was going to play along and call him him the whole time, but it doesn't make any goddamn sense. You're here because you watch the fucking movie. The phantasm fucking disappears whenever he wants to. The smoke, I don't know what the hell the smoke does. It's clear that the smoke is not real. Like, it, you know, well, yeah, like when, cartoons, when like, literally she targets Joker's face <laughs> and the cloud just sits around his face. It's like, what is this sentient smoke you invented, Andrew? And what was your, <laughs> what was also, your father like, into? He also just like uh, Batman is also like there's some sort of chemical polymer residue. In the yeah, the residue. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, it just like I don't understand what the smoke does because it doesn't yeah, seem yeah, like yeah, it does Kev. anything. Science, science with Kev. He said chemical Kevin. polymer. Yeah. Do we ever get a do we ever get a uh, resolution for what the cuz they made a big deal of that where he, they show it twice They're like this is the same smoke that I found on the glass I thought it was going to be a clue that would lead him to like her identity but I don't well, think I we mean, ever get it right It like it led him to understand that both those murders were connected That's all we got Yeah it, and also, it. again, I don't, I don't think I need to be world's greatest detective that all that's, these <laughs> mob dude, bosses are getting knocked off together. We're three movies into this now and it's like I, I feel like even adding on a whole bunch of other things I know about Batman it's like 
people say he's the world's greatest detective a lot more often than we actually see him be the world's greatest detective. Because more often than not, it's kind of just like, a, oh, here's this thing. It looks like that thing must be the thing. And then it is. It's like, this is a perfect example of that where it's like, ah, right, cool. You found the polymers. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think, I, I think it's because many people think the detective work is boring. Maybe. You know what I mean? I think, like, yeah, I think yeah, comics do it so much better than I mean, going is, through right? and piecing things together. There's a lot of staring I, I, and I stuff and thinking. Rizzoli Isles, all right? I'm still watching that show, and they can do Rizzoli some Rizzoli and Isles? Never. <laughs> never again. You're not watching Rizzoli and Isles. You're not watching. What happened How many last seasons? episode of Rizzoli and Isles that you watched? Uh, man, I'll tell you what. They had a perp down on the block, and he had done some kind of sexual thing, and they had some stuff they were trying to piece together to find him. But it turned out that Rizzoli was a bit too close to the case, and that her significant other might have known this person and or mm. been that person. Or Frank. maybe it was Isles' child who was somehow involved what's which one's Rizzoli and which one's Isles I could not you could put any <laughs> you can go Nick you get uh, like 10 different photos of actresses together I wouldn't be able to tell you <laughs> we're doing that on the podcast tomorrow you know we're gonna do the we ultimate got, Rizzoli and Isles test Tim you Mark know how we there. got Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles crossover did we ever get a Franklin and Bash and Rizzoli and Isles crossover oh uh, we should have <laughs> they weren't I mean Franklin and Bash were lawyers everyone knows that Andy don't be stupid Rizzoli and Isles of course uh were uh they were like more like they were for the coroner's office right weren't they like it forensic looks like they could work cops? together to me Nick sounds like I mean Andy you just proved my point you're right we're not Rizzoli talking about Frank <laughs> I hate you so Patrick. much Nick you just <laughs> proved my point you're right no <laughs> Rizzoli yeah, and Isles always longer. reminds me of the the fast food chain Fazoli's. Did this Yo, ever make it out here to California? I have I no know. idea. What Tim? Do you know what they're talking about? At Not all? the slightest. <laughs> Kevin, this one's especially for you. And Andy, if I'm lying, I'm dying. You know it. Fazoli's was fast food pasta. Yes. Where you'd go to the drive through like a McDonald's and order a spaghetti and meatball, and you pull up to the window Christ. and they'd give it to you. Kevin, that awesome. oh, Kevin, they no, had endless breadsticks and endless they were bread phenomenal, sticks. Kevin. Yeah. We would go, I tell you what we would do. We were going to the Coheed and Cambria concert. We we're gonna wait in line for like eight hours so we could be the first. But we're like, we gotta carb up, guys. And I ate, I swear to God, like 19 breadsticks. Why that are day. you carbo insane. loading for waiting in line? That's not a <laughs> physically <laughs> demanding. Time. We're gonna be we gotta lift the energy, Kev. Anyway, back <laughs> to Batman. Sorry. For me, it was the one time like you talk about being broke in college where I went to Fazoli's to get a spaghetti and meatball, some sticks and a coke, and I got Got up there and the guy headed the food there and I handed him my credit card and he ran it and he just went did it again a third time he's like all right yeah you have no money in your account <laughs> and i just took it back and i went oh all right <laughs> and slowly drove away <laughs> like i couldn't get the food like i had no other form of payment Wait, i just had to slowly here's leave here's the thing <laughs> have you ever had uh like spaghetti at sabaros no if I'm there, I'm there for a big old slice. No, I'm about to take Italian za. Wipe your ass that slice. I, I, feel <laughs> like, I feel like I've never had good spaghetti at like a, a mall. Like I've Kevin never been knows. like, you know what? This is fantastic sure. spaghetti. I'm going back. Now, hold on a second. You and Blessing love Jollibee. Have you ever had good spaghetti at Jollibee? Uh, no. The Jollibee there is made Filipino style, which means the marinara or the, the red sauce has a sweetness to it. And I'm not oh, a fan okay. of that. I'm not sure, a fan sure, of that. sure. Anyways, uh, so now uh, Mr. Chucky Soul uh, drives at the Phantasm after shooting a bunch. Phantasm turns to smoke. Chucky goes through the smoke. Like, and then he, like, when the smoke clears, it turns up, yeah, he's 150 stories up in this parking garage right through a fucking wall. I was like, ah! It is, that is an interesting point because, and Kevin, you might know more about this. Do they traditionally, I guess they do sometimes build parking garages on the top of buildings, well, but not normally no, skyscrapers, no, right? Yeah, not, not, There's a lot of concrete to put usually, on top of offices. I want to say the highest you see in most places five to seven stories somewhere around yeah, that of the part yeah. and that's usually the parking structure and then right. everything's built on top of that so the fact that he is a hundred stories into the air in this doesn't yeah. make a ton of sense you imagine but there's a lot of small shots in this that when you start thinking about you're like that's weird don't even but think about it can you imagine for a second it. driving up because you know how you always have to drive in like in a circle, like a spiral. Yeah, you'd be there for forty-five up. minutes, yeah. and you'd be you'd throw up. Someone's like, <laughs> and just throw up on their shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> It reminds me of like how Nick used to like uh, go through the SFO parking lot when we got uh, to the park there, and he would like as fast as he hard, could. Man. I try to drift that shit, Tim. You did. You live in that's also. And we got a Fast and Furious stories. moment here too. Anyways, yeah, did. yeah, building to building, right? <laughs> Car off one Didn't side, drive. He died. Building to building. Yeah, he yeah, he smashes. Die. He dies. We don't really get like him dead, eyeballs hanging out of his face or anything, but he's dead. It turns out, right? Because his car smashes there, and then uh, Batman finally shows up. <laughs> he's like, "What happened?" And he runs over. And he looks over the side, and everybody's like, "Holy shit, this guy's dead!" And Batman did it. And Batman's like, "Ah, fuck, here we go again." Fuck, I knew it was gonna happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 
Phantasm disappears. Uh, then we get Arthur Reeves. Arthur Reeves is a councilman, uh, and he's leading a news conference in the morning, and he's like, uh, it's Batman. Batman did all this to us, and uh, he killed this guy, and finally Batman's gone too far, and we hate Batman now. And everybody's like, and Gordon's like, I don't really hate Batman. And uh, he says something really funny, though, Arthur, where he's like, you know, uh, yeah, and Batman's mentally unhinged or whatever. And then we cut to the Batcave where Batman's watching it as Bruce Wayne and, and uh, Alfred's there. And Alfred's like, oh, no, you're totally hinged. I hung your smoke bombs in the other room and did this thing. And Bruce's like, ah, you got me. You got me. You know what I mean? And this is the other thing like we were talking about, right? Of uh, there, you're, the conversation of like, he's got the glass. Or the, he picked up glass there, right? He's, he picked up some glass. It had some sh- smuts on it. And he's like, oh, look at this. Polymer. This is... This is a polymer, of course. Alfred and Alfred's like, of course, it's a polymer. I knew that. It's broken glass with a polymer on. I'm not an idiot. And he's like, yeah. If is I it, break down is this, it me or Alfred seems scared in this one. Like, I don't want to piss this guy off. Whatever no, Alfred seems great off. in this one. This is the most human Alfred we've ever had. human human Alfred we've ever human. had. I love, him. love him. Great performance is always from this Alfred, whose name I can never pronounce. Do you know this guy's how to pronounce this name? I don't remember it. I'll look it up real quick. Ephraim Zimbalis Jr. I'm gonna say. Oh. Zimbalis, Everybody get yeah. on that. That Anyways, uh, Batman has that. Um, oh, this is then. Uh, uh, I, I think they do they introduce it here. Or does it just happen? They introduce it. They're doing a party at Wayne Manor that night. Maybe not. It doesn't really matter. But what happens then is we get Arthur talking to Andrea, even though we don't know it's Andrea. She's on a plane. A lot of misdirection here for us as the viewer. She did all this stuff as Phantasm, then got on a plane. Did she say that to Arthur? And he she implanted that in his head. Did she just? Does her apartment look like a plane? And I thought she was in a plane. And she's not in a plane doesn't matter uh she has a conversation with him while she has a magazine with bruce wayne's face on it of like yeah we're doing this thing tonight she's like don't worry about him it's all over and i'm whatever blah 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 blah. so we go to a party now at wayne manor and we get to see playboy bruce wayne sitting there whining and dining all these women who have that whap they are there and they are ready and they want to fuck this guy and they're like doing the they're turning their backs on him and rubbing their bodies on him this one woman walks up she's got no pupils (laughs) She's so just high. got dead She's black so eyes. High. It happened, and I was like, uh, I was like, I was trying to remember. I'm like, does she turn into Harley Quinn here? Like, is this a? And Somebody, I was like, oh wait, the redesign of Harley Quinn in like Batman, the new Batman cartoon had that. Not even this one. I'm pretty sure that one of the voices was the Harley Quinn voice. Yeah, it sounds a lot like Harley Quinn. Her. Yeah, I, I will say shout out to uh, you know it's it's 1993, 1992 when they're making this probably. Shout out to the very multicultural. PC. You appreciated the diversity, but did you appreciate that one of them that was a minority had jet black eyes like a shark? Wait, sorry. No, no, hold on, hold on. Give me a sec. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, hold on. I accidentally unplugged the audio and it like killed everything. Give me two seconds. What are you guys? Okay. I mean, they can still see you. Desktop audio. Why is it? No, they can hear. They can hear me. So sorry, kids. We're coming back in just one second. General Oppo. I thought you just spoiled it for me for your Rizzolian Isles test tomorrow. Now that I don't know who this AD is, I'll be fine. I will, I I will, thought, I will I not was, look up Angie Hartman. I always thought it was one person, Rizzolian Isles. Like the I last don't know what that on. show is, and you guys keep talking about it like it was a popular show. It was super popular for I don't my think mom. so, because I the doorbell it. just rang. I got to get it. I got to get the okay. door. Go Rizzolian Isles oh, We're back, show. by the way. They can hear you guys. That's yeah, fine. So they want to know. Chad, everybody in chat was like, oh, okay, Nick is still talking about Batman. No, we're talking about Rizzoli and Isles the whole time. Been, but Rizzoli yeah, and Isles is one of those shows that only would get, it would get a lot of publicity during, I don't know, like, like the, two and it's the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl or uh-huh. the playoffs. And they'd be like, check out Rizzoli and Isles. And it's a show that probably lasted two it, seasons, maybe. It was TNT, and I'm looking at it right now. You're right, Andy, because it was always like, the night it heats up on TNT. It was like Rizzoli and Isles. And then, then on Franklin and Bash, and tonight on Suits, which I know I just mixed those up because some of those USA. Yeah. It looks like it had seven seasons, Andy. 
so shit. you wow. can Good take your opinion and cram it in one of your holes because there's like the only that is popular. The the fact that it's TNT makes me think that it it, uh, it went into syndication because TNT doesn't usually broadcast new stuff. I always right? thought TNT was just syndication. Yeah. I don't know. No, I mean I think for a long time it was. Yeah, maybe. I'm just. I it looks like on IMDb it was okay. seven seasons. Let me see if I can figure out where it, where it uh, where it came from. But it's not got, really high priority. Craig, what what you opening right there, buddy? What's he going? Come on, Daddy. What are you opening? Pops. You got them pops? Nah, it wasn't pop. Mm. Is it an extra? We have pop. a whole bunch of different boxes, but this is Oculus Quest Two. Oh cool. shit, that's cool. So this movie really like made me realize how much I don't like people referring to their dads as daddy. Daddy, like, you, you hit a certain oh, age, daddy. then you should just stop. You know, or you have and to be I, really what, rich. What is that age? But probably like really rich makes sense. Too. Like eleven. If yeah, eleven's probably around where if you if like if I was walking around with my kid and he was in junior high and he was like, "Daddy," I'd be like, "You call me father." It's really weird, and I don't like it. I don't like the relationship with this councilman or whatever it is. Well, she's supposed to be like she's supposed to be young in this. Like remember she they're supposed to probably have met right out of college and she's like a she's supposed to be like that rich spoiled girl so she just calls him daddy. But he's also a crook. A crooked crook. That's we'll get to that later. Height. Instead, like we said, we're at the party. Mm-hmm. A I'm whole bunch of people crook. with WAPs want to fuck Bruce Wayne. Oops, and then one of them that used to have a WAP, like she comes over and she's like, I'll tell you what he does. He treats you like this and then doesn't call you ever and acts like you died. She, like, and she throws a drink him, in his right? fucking face. Throws a drink in his face. That's it. And it's like, damn, this is Bruce Wayne really playing it up well here. You know what I mean? Uh, and he walks away, and that, that's when Arthur Reeves comes over and is like, oh, Bruce, uh, I swear you pick them like they're just going to leave you. You don't want them to stick around anyway, you dumb idiot. Here, clean your face off. And then he's like, what about that one, though, that got away? All right, that's Andrea Beaumont. And he's like, ah, fuck, fuck you, Arthur. You suck. And he walks away. Such a lame moment, though. I didn't what? like any of this. That was such a yeah. real moment where it's like, oh, shit, that one hurt. That one hurt. Nah, it was just, I don't know. Andy, you got to find just, love. You know what I mean? So you was, understand Yeah, Andy, things. where's your no, heart? But it was just, it was just badly Hardly. executed in the way that he's like, what about that? What, like, I don't know. It. It was clearly just we got to get position. Yeah, we, we got to get this gotta... exposition off, like out to the audience so they know that Bruce had his heart broken. But the, the way it was all just sort of executed was pretty lame. And so oh, Bruce goes into another room to sulk and clean his face. And then we get the awesome in his own head of uh, Kevin Conroy. Andrea, like, right, because he's thinking yeah. about it, you know, and we go into a flashback and, and we go sucked. into What do you mean? It sucked out. I mean, that that was funny. It was funny in a bad way. You're right. Yeah, that's, but the that's, flashback's that's, cool. That's more of what I mean, that we get that gotcha. moment as well. And then later on at, down the line when Batman realizes that the dude is Joker and he's like, dude, no, <laughs> like that moment. is too- <laughs> <laughs> but about, uh, Andy, That was also he, awesome. He did it bug, bug you when he dra- he draws the bottom half of the smile and he goes, <laughs> no, and it cuts back and the top half is drawn. And I was like, who drew the top half? Uh, what what a and weird it reveal. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Also, while we're here, just making fun of stupid things in this, I, I want to know how angry Tim was when Batman runs from the cops. There's a one point where he like swings down and then he just flat out bites it, just yeah. out of nowhere. And I was like, "Oh, Tim's gonna hate this." Tim hates Batman Come falling on, down. Make Batman cool, guys. That, that, Everyone's uh, so determined to humanize him in this way that doesn't make sense. That escape that he's trying to do, he has a lot of bad falls where it's like, why would he not even try to roll? Like I, I guess the animation. He's, young. He, he's never looked more scared in his life. He looked yeah. like every criminal that he's ever chased in these goddamn <laughs> cartoons, dude. He's running away and he's like, ah. <laughs> like, like come on, Batman. <laughs> well, he has like a concussion at that point. He's bleeding, he's maskless, so whatever. Anyways, in this section of the, the movie, uh, we have the flashback. It's Bruce at his parents' grave, sitting there being all broody as usual, broody Bruce. Broody. And then, but then he hears somebody else talking, and he looks over, and it's Andrea, and she's talking to her uh, dead mom. And he comes over, he's like, "What? This is another horrible scene." What? Excuse me? And she's like, "What? I wasn't talking to you. I'm just over here." He's like, "Oh, sorry. I thought I thought you were talking to me." And then he starts to leave, and she can clear. She's clearly back to a conversation, and she's like, "Oh yeah, that's Bruce Wayne. Yeah." But he's, and he comes back, he's like. I'm sorry. What did you? She's like, I'm talking to my dead mom, idiot. I'm explaining who you are, you I dummy. Well, how would you not get that? She's staring at the ground, talking. Of course, right. the first thing I would think is she's talking to her parents. Maybe she just needs a second to herself. Maybe butt out of it, you fucking creepy rich kid. You guys exactly. don't understand. Like it, that's such a foreign thing because he never talks to his parents. He just sits there and stands Ever. silently in front of them. You know, at no point, at no he's point, he's literally gonna have movie. a conversation with them in this movie. Well, that's because yeah, she, he... she taught him. That's because she taught him. Oh, she taught him that. Earlier, we see him standing there just being like, 
What did do I see, do? Did you see that guy, Mom? That's Bruce Wayne. No, see, oh, that's what? Tom, did you yeah. talk about me again? No, still not talking about you. She's, oh, okay. They, they walk back to the cars together. Yeah, I know. They walk back to the car together, and I forget. She's, oh, you know, he's like, yeah, he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I talk to my parents sometimes. She's like, oh, yeah. And he's like, I took a vow. Oh, what kind of vow? A secret vow. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Bruce Wayne, fucking get secrets. your life sorted out. <laughs> you know what I mean? I understand your parents died 12 years ago. It's time to pull them together, all right? <laughs> Psycho. <laughs> Anyways, he puts her in the car. She fixes her his uh, collar. I forget what she asks him. He's like, oh, I thought you didn't care. And she's like, I don't. Mom does. And she pulls away or whatever or and it's like on the car. one hand it's like that's a good one on the other hand like you're crazy yeah you're not actually talking to her right <laughs> you know what i you mean know, dogs like, don't actually talk not, uh. <laughs> i don't know about you lady but all right see you later <laughs> redheads am i right um from there uh bruce goes out on uh not one of his first times being an, a vigilante with his uh ski mask on uh yeah he's gonna stop some people who are taking some crates and so he drops down he's like he's like spit out your arms and legs and starfish on the ground motherfuckers <laughs> and they're like oh no we're gonna starfish shoot you on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> to which to which the other five people are like no no, <laughs> no. There's Wait, five of us, and we have today? guns. Ba Bruce, uh, Bruce runs away real quick and grabs the security guard. They tied up. He saves him. Gunshots are going off. Um, I think he might have already punched some people. He definitely punches some people now. Um, the truck drives away. He runs after it or whatever. He jumps on the back, and he's like, oh, eh. Like trying to get on the door, you know what I mean? Like a fucking fat Greg Miller trying to get out of the pool onto the diving board. It don't work, <laughs> brother. It don't fucking work, Some, Butterball. Somebody save that big fish. <laughs> <laughs> somebody parked their van on this diving board. Um, he's trying to get up there. He eventually gets up there. Uh, they're, they're, they were throwing crates at him too. He just did not give a shit. Uh, he gets to the front of the the truck, and the dude's like, "I'm gonna fucking kill this guy." And so he's driving, and Bruce got a hammer at one point. He's like, "Ah." <laughs> hitting the hammer on the glass <laughs> guys like stop fucking up the it's a rental stop uh he gets to the front of the grill though and he's on the grill and he's like listen nobody's stealing these tv vcr combos and he reaches <laughs> into his fake utility belt and gets out his little fake cal caltrops and tosses them out they blow out the tires even though he's on the front of it like a fucking garfield on a windshield mm -hmm. and so and this thing is hurtling, hurtling, hurtling. And, of course, it stops just in the nick of time before crushing him against the wall. He's there. Uh, he got his ass kind of kicked, but he also, you know, stopped, stopped the crime from happening. I think the cops show up and he runs away from the cops. Like oh, he, yeah. A young, a young Harvey Bullock was there. A young Harvey Bullock. It, it was a, a cop. In the, he's like, Jonesy, drive over there. I feel so like he seen, caused a lot of damage. Way totally, more yeah. damage than totally. was necessary. That's what he does, Kevin. You know? And he also, does. he didn't even save the, like, the... The dude that got hit with the, you know, the metal, what is it called? Yeah, that guy's, he saved him. He pulled him inside from no, being uh, shot. Well, he, he saved him from being shot, but he, like, he could have jumped in a minute earlier. And not, that guy couldn't, like, that guy probably has a concussion. He had, he had maybe to build a himself skull. up, though. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he really didn't dangerous. save a lot. But you I'll can save a lot by do. using honey. Oh, These days, hey, it feels like online shopping is the only shopping we really do. That's where today's sponsor, Honey comes in it's the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and automatically tests them when you're checking out scours word of the day big fan of that uh it's super easy you install it once a couple clicks gets it in your browser and then anytime you're buying stuff online it just automatically searches for the best promo codes it applies them and it saves you money i personally saved hundreds if not thousands of dollars from using honey over the years kind of funny it's definitely saved thousands of dollars and you don't even need to think about it it just does it for you uh when you're checking out on one of the over thirty thousand supported sites honey pops up and all you have to do is click apply coupons searches it applies it you're saving the money. It's simple. If you have a computer, Honey should be on it. It's free and works with whatever browser you use. You can get Honey for free today at joinhoney.com slash morning. That's joinhoney.com slash morning so they know that we sent you. It's free. That's the craziest thing to be. It's not even a service you have to pay for. Totally could have to be paid for because it's worth it, but it's free. Honey.com slash morning. Next up, I want to give a shout out to Bespoke post this fall as you get back into the swing of things uh bespoke post has brand new seasonal box of awesome collections guaranteed to upgrade your life kevin you recently got one of these you got the the hue kit i'm loving using it using it in your bathroom right yeah i set it up tied it with uh well it gave me a new hub too which i actually needed because i have mm -hmm. too many hue lights i don't need to get into that part of it but it's it works great i mean hue lights are the best and the fact that i got two in this little set i'm all about it 
There you go, man. Box of Awesome, they have a whole bunch of different categories you can pick, whether you're into alcohol, whether you're into light stuff, whether you're into like clothing, they got options for you. Uh, Joey got this Weekender bag recently. She just went to her mom's house, and I saw her take that bag with her. So uh, but the Box of Awesome is definitely helping out. Kind of funny here. To get started, you just take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. Each box costs only $45, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. You can get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter code MORNING at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com code morning for 10 20 percent off your first box back to it uh so yeah and the next morning bruce is uh training in what's he training in guys jujitsu yeah, he is. Just yeah like he is. fucking nick you know what i mean and of course uh he's over there talking to alfred and alfred's all like oh man and, and this is what we're talking about earlier where he's like they weren't scared of me i need to i need to instill fear in their hearts when they see me they can't just see a guy in a ski mask drop down and tell him to say starfish it up i need to scare them and uh in the middle of this you know i was like maybe we should keep this shop up i just feel like alfred's like yeah i mean you scare me i don't know you're pretty scared it's his friend you know what i mean it's just it's his son out there doing all this crap there's a moment later where he comes out in the suit and alfred looks terrified oh yeah he's he's like oh god i'm terrified (laughs) totally totally uh but instead yeah uh he uh, andrea shows up and they stop the shop talk and then she's like what are you doing and he's like jujitsu it's what all the cool people do maybe you've heard of it it's called jujitsu and she just walks over and pushes him down because she's like i went to the fucking school for girls and this is how they taught me to fight and he's like uh i mean Uh," he just sits there all "Uh, jujitsu isn't that cool i guess i don't know (laughs) my lungs hurt (laughs) And then he says, Andrea, take off your shoe and lay down. I want to do a move to you. Uh, they roll around, though, and they have this just fucking connection. They start making out in the grass. And Alfred comes in to give him some lemonade or some shit. And he sees it like, whoop. And he just does the Grandpa Simpson turns around and leaves, right? Uh, and that's the end of the flashback. We've shown that they are in love and that 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 this is how their relationship began. Uh, back in our time period, there's another uh, crime boss. Uh, there, yeah, there's another crime boss. And they're at a gravesite. They're at the, they're back at the graves. I forget what they're doing in the graveyard. They went right? to but Chucky's th- grave, who had just died, to pay their. Were respects. they paying their respects? Yeah, were they? Is that respects. what they're doing? Oh, okay, I mean, okay. he might have been. So, he might have been going there to pee on him. We, there's no sure, clear fair. way to know. So he goes there and is like, "Cool, Chucky Soul, you're great." And then what happens is smoke comes up. It's the fucking phantasm again. And this guy's like, "Oh no, this is not what I Wait, wanted." Just to be clear, he definitely was going there to talk shit. Because he walked up and he was like, you were always dumb or something like that. And then Phantasm later says it back to him. Yeah. Does he? Or no, does she? Uh, Anyways, Phantasm is like, I'm going to fucking kill you. Fucks up the dudes he's with and chases him. And he's just running, running, running. He eventually falls in a grave. Fant- and he's just so fucking small and fat and unathletic, he can't get out of the grave. And that's where I got the ups, is that at least, you know, granted, I'm fat and unathletic too, but I'm tall. So like a six-foot grave, I could climb out of. I'm not worried How about How deep that. of a pit do you think you're like, oh, fuck, I can't climb out of here? I would say probably, I mean, what, seven feet? I mean, like, I feel like it, so? he doesn't even try. Like, yeah, yeah, How wet like- is the, How wet is the dirt, too? You know, well, you gotta thing. imagine it's not that wet. Greg, I give you two tries before you sit down and start playing Switch and just give up and just resign to the fact <laughs> no, that you're I an feel like, I, I feel like Greg's gonna Someone will find Greg's me. gonna like dig out stairs with his hands. Like I, I can see him get in there and be like, I got this, I got this. You get there, he's just covered in dirt. I'm, I'm in Kevin, dirt. Kevin, your new place has a backyard. <laughs> Go dig some holes of multiple sizes, and I would gladly come over, and we can do a weekly challenge and see which saying, one I can get out of. You're saying that? I can set it all up. I'm done. You understand I'm 100%. That I mean, I, want, I don't want you to leave me for dead when I can't get out of the one that we find the best. Oh, no, I'll get you a ladder. I'll get you a ladder. We'll pull sure. you out. Some to rope, make sure maybe. he's dead, <laughs> push the grave into him. It's just like. Yeah, great headstone on top of him. So right? much more. I thought, oh, maybe they're going to just you know dig him up, and he'll be buried alive. No. Even worse. Somehow even worse than being buried alive so that's great and that makes the newspapers the next day where a very old mafia boss sees it and seems like he's gonna die but he just gets his oxygen he's fine we'll meet him later or whatever then uh gotham city uh police department is like kind of starting to turn on uh, uh batman right but is this where they use the bat signal as the trap i forget no that's later right 
No, I think that's pretty close. Is it? Is like, it here? It, it here here's to... where they put on the signal, and it's it, like Gordon's like, "I'm not gonna fucking help you," and Reeves is like, "Fine, I'll fucking do it myself." And him and Bullock go up there. They turn on the the light, but or the bat signal. Batman doesn't come because Batman is over at uh, the gravesite where all of this happened, right? And he's like, "Oh yeah, like I gotta go investigate." And that's when he finds the, polymer. the next, yeah, the next polymer, right? That's how he gets this, right, Ever? Such a good and detective. He's, such a good detective. I'm just know saying I mean? not Again. everyone knows to look at the, the plants on the ground and be like, mm, there's a similar chemical here that That's there true. was in the garage. Interesting. He probably smelled it. These are probably pro- connected. Yeah. In my brain, it smells like fog juice. You know what that, that smells t- like? That's, yeah, that little That's sweetness good. to it. You're like, mm, kind of want to lick it, but I'm, I know yeah, it's I'm glad idea. I've never tasted it, but I've always it. wanted to. I know. Kevin, go look some fog juice while you're digging those holes for Greg. Thank you. Can I, can Greg, I say I'll something that is like that is revealing about me? Yeah, uh, a couple days ago, I've never seen a Tide Pod in my oh, life. God. Sure, yeah. and, uh, you wanted uh, to eat it, didn't you? I noticed that. So Joey has Tide Pods. Nick, everyone and I was wants like, to I wonder eat what those. they look like. It's like, why the fuck would people want to eat? Like, there was that whole thing of people eating it, and I pulled yeah. it out, and I was just like, I'll be damned if I don't want to put this in my mouth. <laughs> 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 it look and feel delicious. You know what I mean? It's like, weird. Why a company anyway. hasn't made Tide Pod edible like candies blows Terrible my idea. mind. Blow, no, it's a terrible idea, but I'd eat one of those bad boys. You imagine well, somebody was, was doing it like donuts, sour? I remember. There was a thing like bakeries were doing it when this was happening. They were making God. like their own. Like, but that's like a local cream, thing. Different cream-filled things. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just, I'd like, you know, they're blue a lot, and I'd like it to be that Green blue too. sour, the blueberry sour jelly. I'll tell so you what, you gotta, be, good. you gotta be careful with the Tide Pods, though, because here's what happens. Like, they never, ever fully disintegrate in my washer, and for the first like 10 washes, they wouldn't fully disintegrate. So there would just be like a piece of plastic st- and two shirts like stuck to it. You but know, that's the isn't it that because you're overpacking your your washer? You need to put less in less in there. No. So now instead of being a smart person and just getting washer and just getting like, you know, the fucking uh, what fabric softener or whatever, I get a Tide Pod and I just go a little tick and I. It, do you, right, know you, muted, you, more, do you know you how muted, much you muted your you mic? Muted Andy. You hit your mic. We Did can't he do hear it you. on purpose? He must have. Andy, do you understand oh, how Andy, much I more expensive the fucking Tide Pod is than just getting the liquid detergent? Yeah, because you're thing. doing the same thing now. But it reminds me of putting frosting on a toaster strudel. That's fair. But that's the that's, but, yeah, that's the exact Fuck same thing as pouring. that's the luxury he pays for, Kevin. Let it, I just, let but the luxury is it's only one. You just toss it in there. Jokes on you. Andrea and Arthur Reeves go to dinner. Uh, they're at like basically this like Windows on the World Gotham City restaurant. Uh, Arthur's got the hots for her. Andrea. Andrea. Uh, Andrea. Andrea. Andrea is not giving it like the whole feel. You know what I mean? She's not giving the full feel. But like Arthur wants to go further, obviously, in this relationship. And I don't. And like yeah, Arthur keeps referring to him as daddy as well. Yeah, he's like, and how is daddy? And she's like, oh, we're closer than we've ever been. Like, oh, that's a weird thing to say. All that's of this is weird and incestuous. I, I was not. Yeah, it was, not happy about it. I, him calling her it, her father daddy made me really uncomfortable. I'll tell you to, what though, like, Tim. I, I'll tell you what though. Please do. We're talking about it being incestu- incestuous. Mm-hmm. This took place in '93. The 20 year mark is up by now. That's, That's not, not how, how that works. works. That's not how it works. <laughs> it's not just 20 years from the time. <laughs> it's, tw- it it's 20 from, years. Like, from if like they were 20... saying it, they would have said 40. 34 years. You don't know if he said it or not. You don't know. It's true. But it no, no. doesn't make it already a thing. You know what I mean? Got it. Got it. Yeah, and it's 19 years. Oh. How is the old man? He says we're closer than ever. Uh, Batman's across the street. He's just being a c- complete goober. Just this not is, even like not even in shadows. Those, just staring at like, her. <laughs> this is one of those scenes where he should have been probably two more buildings over. Yeah. There's yeah. no fucking way the table next to uh, Andrea's table and this guy didn't look over and like. Is that fucking Batman just right <laughs> off the roof, dude? The there. shot is comical. It's so funny seeing their two faces and just Batman in the back. It's He's like, so – it would be like oh. literally, Tim, if you looked out of your window right now and just saw Batman in the next house like looking at you. It's so apparent. <laughs> just and the, 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 like, the, the hands in the, in the binoculars or whatever, like the little hand. The thing I loved about that is like the, the hands that were drawn were actually painted as a background as opposed to like animated sort yeah. of just drawing order. So it was just like – 
two little still hands. <laughs> it's so weird, dude. I do, I do love that though, and and that's one of the things I I like about the animated series is they do show him like high up a lot. They show him perch on these things. They show him sort of blending in with the background. Not obviously in this one, we're making fun of it. Like gargoyle. It's a little bit weird that he's using his bat powers to uh to basically stalk his ex girlfriend, but uh because at this point he doesn't really know she's related to the phantasm at all, right? He just knows she's in town but, and he's. Like, well, well no, he does remember because he found the polymer stuff by the her just gravestone like, right yeah. or, oh her right, right, right by her by her mom's gravestone so he assumes maybe she has that's right, the grass that's right. yeah, yeah but uh, uh go ahead from here we go into a flashback more of andrea and bruce uh you know getting to know each other becoming this whole thing this is what we we're talking about earlier they go to the world's fair uh they're walking around she's like do you really think we'll see any of this stuff happen bruce and he's like oh and he's looking at what a car that'll be the batmobile um and they fuck around there which and... uh can we can we talk about the batmobile sure cool. awesome don't we have a show? Cool. Don't we have a, like a show within a show? Isn't that a podcast? Oh, sure, sure, podcast? sure, sure. But here's my thing before we even hit this thing of the podcast within the podcast. Do we, we don't really see the Batmobile. Like, we know it's the Batmobile. Don't because we see it of, when it drives out of the cave and it's like that you shouldn't have a turn like that in the middle of your cave structure, right? Sure. But it's like the animated series, I feel like we get way more Batmobile than we get in this, this movie. Yeah, yes, sure. But like to include it, like I feel like we still can include it in our Batmobile. Talk. Andy hit the songs. Batmobile. <laughs> here's kind of funny uh batman in reviews in reviews in reviews a podcast within a podcast within a podcast uh we're talking about the best batmobile right now the rankings look like this number one is the batmobile from 1989 batman number two is the batman returns batmobile we didn't like the luge <laughs> number three is 66 batmobile where do you guys want to rank the uh batmobile here from uh mask of the phantasm I mean, True. I think it's you're gonna get under, underneath the '89 Batman. Mm-hmm. Oh, that I'll one's real. Above. Yeah, but like, if this one would be real, it would definitely be, be number one. It's so you're cool. Right. And when so like sick. that shot where we see the inspiration of it, and he just fucking loses his shit. Oh. I get it. <laughs> I say Great. it's I, yeah. I would I'll, I would give it. I'll be, I'll play ball and say number two. I I think that the Tim Burton Batmobile is better. Right, but hold on, the a second. thing hold I don't on. help out much. Switch over and it's just the fact that we don't see a lot of it in this movie. Look at this. So yeah, you're, you're yeah but I mean, we don't see hard. this Batmobile this. enough in this movie. He doesn't it, really but do anything. We see it, right? We Batman. see it once, at least. So that counts I honestly enough. don't know if we did see it once. We you say that, and it. I believe you, but I don't even remember seeing it I once. I just want to point out that Look just a couple cool fun things looks. about this. Very One, cool Batmobile. Dope. Two, it, it appears, and Kevin, maybe you can count the cylinder heads a little bit more, but it appears like it's a V12. It looks like there's six exhaust ports on either side. Man, that's a fast car. Look at this. I'm going 89 for sure. No, you're crazy. This is number one. Where do you think we see it? Because I'm looking right now. I got Netflix open. I'm scanning. I'm scanning. I'm scanning. He drives it around a little bit. There's that part where he just slowly drives it past um, the penguin as penguins just chilling in a coffee shop. No, that's that's 89. I I knew that Nick was going to refer to that (laughs) scene in this in review. I think it's hilarious. (laughs) It was such a stupid scene. It's like, why would you need to drive by as Batman? He's just everyone. That's the moment I was like, everyone just knows he's Batman. Why are you buying it? Guys, I really want to buy this toy you know what i mean first off you should buy the toy secondly i'm scanning this movie where do i where am i seeing the one scene scene. there's a scene where he's coming out of the i I don't he's coming out of the back cave and he takes a hard right turn and it's like there's no reason to ever take that turn so hard yeah spider-man fan 126 is it's in the movie yeah, it was. In yeah, the that, movie. A lot of people can say that. I'm just saying I'm looking through right now, and that's how hard it is to find the Batmobile in this, which is why. It I think but it doesn't, doesn't matter. Number if it's number in one I shot, if it's in one shot, two. it's in the movie, and it's number, number one, in my opinion. You guys are crazy, and I hate you all. Not you, Andy. Well, that's rough. You know what I mean? What if I do? There's a great thing here. So after he falls, he's falling in love with her clearly, and he's talking to Alfred, and he's like, What the heck am I thinking, Alfred? Like, you know what I mean? He's like, whoa, I, Batman, I can't fall in love. I have a fucking mission to do or whatever. And uh, from there. Uh, and it's just like, do you, though? You know what I mean? You yeah, can stop. Like, you, you can you fucking are... stop right now. Do you think at any point Alfred was like, do you know what's more? Um, probably it's going to be better for the overall city than you just randomly fighting street thugs is using your billions of dollars to affect change. Like, you yeah. could probably mm-hmm. just cure homelessness in Gotham City with all of your money and still have a few bill left over. Just FYI. And he's like, no, I have to fight crime. And Alfred's like, fuck <laughs> it. I tried. I tried, yeah, man. My secret. <laughs> yeah. 
Hold on, I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking at the Slack. Try to find not it. Slack. The chat. Uh, Spider fan. It's in the movie. He drives to the grave. <laughs> like, that's the best we can do. Is that he drives? He, uh, you know. I, what mean, I mean, here's the thing. It's in the movie, so it counts. Should be number I'm one. I'm not it's saying beautiful. it's not. Shouldn't be ranked. I'm just saying. Greg, uh, sounds Greg, like I'm that's exactly you. what you're Greg, trying to find. Greg, here it is. You. Here it is. Yeah. Wow. Greg. There it is. Wow. How sexy is this? Is it? It's in it for two seconds. Is it drive to a gravesite? Greg, what is it? Greg, Greg, let's see some fucking guns pop out of it. Let's see some right. Let's burn someone alive with this yeah. car. Okay, yeah. this, this is this uh, a movie for kids or is this a movie for NC seventeen guys who want to get their fuck on? Right? Yeah. Come on. Exactly. Let's burn some ants, Andy. Let's go. <laughs> Anyways, uh, after this, they meet up with uh, her dad, where her dad is there with uh, the. Uh, yeah the joker right he's outside and then he's also there with arthur because arthur turns out is like cooking the books and then the dad is there uh with uh the gangster who turns out to be the old man and it's like oh okay right and Abe uh Vigoda. Abe Vigoda. Hey, that is a vagoda isn't it, yeah. it is Abe Vigoda. Yeah. great great that. voice casting this across the board Oh, yeah. Um, when Bruce and this isn't because this isn't when Joker's like, hey, hey, nice, you're abroad. Uh, but when uh, uh, Bruce and Andrea leave, uh, they walk outside like, all right, well, hey, this is weird. Your dad's kind of, oh, what the hell? And then like a biker gang shows up and just fucks up some guy who's like trying to sell lemonade or three card Monty. I don't even fucking know. But they're like, <laughs> we're gonna kill this guy for this box of cash because again, Gotham City has always been a fucking toilet. Batman comes in, or I guess at this point it's Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Wayne comes in. After the guy's been knocked out with the thing, you know what I'm talking about? The like piece of lead that they hit yeah, people yeah, with. Yeah. It uh, looks like a stake. Blackjack, almost. no, blackjack, blackjack. They call those blackjack. Yeah, yeah. yeah just sorry, just to ba- just to back up though, the guy that's getting assaulted is a criminal, also, right? Like he's running some no. sort of weird illegal. No, I mean it's it's, it's a scam. He's I don't think a, he has a permit a to be out there. Yeah, running his business, but I don't know if it's illegal to the point that he needs to be beaten within an inch of his life. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying I'm not saying the punishment fits the crime. I'm just saying that this guy's up to no good, oh, also, shit. and that if he sure. died, one less you know horrible person in the world sure. right yeah of course I think that's going you're, you're a little very, far just to be clear you're very red mood about it i appreciate that you're taking Absolutely. the jason todd method on how to take care of the system binary um, ones and zeros anyways though batman is uh, bruce wayne sees this and he's like ah oh, fuck this and he runs over there and he starts fucking these guys up and like you want to talk about if you're anybody and you're watching billionaire Bruce Wayne run up moving motorcycles and like he runs up the front of the motorcycle and just goes Pah! and like there's this like slow mo like, and it's like that's fucking dope as shit but holy he fuck fucked why, up who, that guy's day for sure that's what if yeah. I was Andrea watching stuff like I gotta sign up for jujitsu I didn't know they had they, I didn't know they're teaching Nick to run up motorcycles and punch people in the <laughs> that's, face that's actually day one. they teach you that um, yeah. in, in Brazilian uh, but the problem they is he striking. He, you know, he beats the shit out of these people. The one guy's whipping a chain around, and he's just owning him because, of course, he's Bruce slash Batman. But in the middle of all this, even though everything's going swimmingly, and even though Andrea was like, just come back to me, uh, he looks over at Andrea at one point and he's like, oh, oh no, you're watching me do this, and I don't know how to... And as that happens, the guy with a baseball bat drives on by and just fucking full bore. What? He, he gets so distracted. Like, I don't know what happened here. Why did he... Guys, just all of a sudden get the yips and fucking not be able that, to throw the was, ball four feet to first base. Like That that was the on. point, you know what I mean? He can't be in love and be Batman. You know it what I mean? It was so poorly shown, man. And it That's was so saying. unnecessarily violent where it's like that to a viewer, it's distracting where this man, this human man just got hit with a baseball bat from sure. a person on a motorcycle so hard that the baseball bat exploded. And he's yeah. just minorly ah, inconvenienced. Ridiculous. I mean, it, it looked like it hurt him. It you looked like it hurt bad. When, when Sammy Sosa had cork in his baseball bat, I do. Yeah. Know, yeah. You, would, you would cheat in the in the major leagues, and you would you would carve out sort of the center of the baseball bat so that they swing faster, and you would put cork in the center. One time he swung it, and the fucking bat just exploded, Bunch, and they were like, yeah. "Oh, Sammy Sosa's cheating." <laughs> oh. Is that is that how he broke so, him over his knee the whole time? Didn't he are you saying? That? No, a lot you, of people do that. Are That's you cool. saying the guy who hit him is Sammy Sosa? possible <laughs> i'm not saying that <laughs> um this is where batman goes or bruce goes back to the cave or the great he's outside he's at the grave again and he's like ah i can't batman can't be both i can't do this and have this mission and i can't uh be in love and he goes to the grave and he's like let me take back the vow you know let me not do this please let me off the hook give me a sign if it's okay and then andrea comes up and she's like maybe they sent me and they make out and i think it's raining and they make out in the rain it's like ah, or hug in the rain it's, just, it's a great moment because this yeah. is like a great scene of like Batman trying to get out of this thing because he's found love, and I do really appreciate it. I do really, but really like, love I feel like it also shows a humanity of like 
the the human part of him like realizing maybe there's still a chance for him to live a normal life trying to argue with that like that part of him that feels like he needs to make the world a better place and it's just something that i don't think we see that often with batman and it's i think that was like a shockingly powerful moment i loved it yeah 100 percent um some other movie shit happens here, but we're skipping it. And we'll get, I'm sure I'll come up to it later. But in, in what happens, the, it will continue the flashback is there that uh, Andrea is supposed to go to Europe with her father and they don't know how long they'll be gone for. And they're walking around like uh, Wayne, not Manor, but Wayne, like the, the estate, right? They're walking around because eventually some bats fly out. Spoilers. Uh, they're walking around and Bruce is like, no, that that's just, you know, that's not going to do any, he proposes. And she's like, oh my God, of course I'll say yes. And that's when bats come out. It doesn't fucking matter. Uh, and they're like, oh, we're going to get married. This is fucking fantastic, right? So he drives her back to the house. Uh, daddy's there and she's like, oh, not you, Nick, the other daddy. Daddy's okay. there and she's like, oh, daddy never has visitors this late. Meow, meow. And the outside is Joker. And this is where he's like, whoo, whoo, I can't whistle. And she gets, he's like, uh, Bruce is like, all right, I'll see you later. Go have fun and tell your dad, or don't tell your dad, or tell your dad. I forget what they're going to say. Don't tell your dad. And like, you know, we'll, we'll deal with the thing and it's, it's just going to be great. And she's like, great. She goes inside and Bruce drives away and he's like, everything's coming up roses for old Batman. He's having a great time, right? Uh, he goes back. Um, <laughs> he's having uh, a great time. I think well, they're just like, all like, working out. Like, yeah, all right. <laughs> and then, yeah. then it's him investigating the cave. And he's like, oh, maybe it runs the length of the entire house. Alfred, this is great. And Alfred's like, bro, bad news. Uh, this just came. And it's the engagement ring. And it's a letter from her being like, it's over. We're too young. I'm going to the Mediterranean with daddy. And he's like, oh, no, it wasn't all great. I thought it was great, but it wasn't great at all. Um, I'm going to put the other one here just to get it done with, right? It turns out that what happened is when she went in there, right, it was all the bad guys were there. And they were like, listen, daddy, you're going to fucking pay us all the money you owe us. And he's like, listen, just give me 24 hours. All the European banks are closed right now, all right? They're all over there on baguette breaks. I need your help to let the, let me off the hook on this one. And just for 24 hours, you get all your money. And they're like, great, no problem. They no sooner close the door. And daddy's like, Andrea, pack up all this shit. We got to fucking run. The money's all in investments. They'll never get it back. We got to get out of here. And she's like, but Bruce just proposed to me. I'm gonna, we're going to start a life and everything's going to be fantastic. And he's like, listen, that old man who's going to be the old man from later who will talk to Arthur in a car at some point and be like, I will protect you. That'll be very important or was very important. Uh, he, he's not going to – he'll fucking follow you to the ends of the earth and kill you. Like it, it's over. Get in the thing. I can protect you. The Mediterranean Sea is vast. They'll never find us there. <laughs> no one can find it on the map from yeah. Gotham. All, and she's all like, of these- fuck, this makes sense. All of these Italians have zero, zero people over anywhere near the Mediterranean Sea that they can come hunt you guys down. They'll never find us. I right. recommend we go to the southern tip of Italy to hide out. Hide in plain sight, as I always say, Greg. Right? <laughs> right, exactly, exactly, exactly. Is it not shocking that they, at no point where they're like, you know, Bruce Wayne's super rich. Why not get the Bruce money from Wayne. him? That's a good point. Like, how much do you think he'll he float us the money? Yeah, it yeah, must have been it. something like that. He'll, may, or, even if it's like $10 million, He's got Take that, that ring. Of, that ring is probably half a big old ring. Big old ring right there. Here you go, it's, Chucky. It's, Great it's point. Tied in weird investments, you know. It's it, it's a weird sort of bank system. I'm doing also, the lamest proposal you know, think, of all time. Yeah, Bruce 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 with the wrong. I mean, he just like, doesn't. Hey, I'm not the good these things. You know what I mean? Yeah. I I mean, it was very much like, hey, Bruce Wayne. I don't know how to handle my feelings. You know, like yeah. I get it. Paul. Whatever, I guess. Um. So that's how that got wrapped up. But like I said, the old man that I referenced earlier, who was putting the screws to Daddy, uh, he had gotten in the car with Arthur and was like, "You got to help me. They're killing everybody." Arthur was like, "Get fucked, old man." He's like, "Oh no, who can I turn to?" Oh right, I'll turn to the Joker. So he goes to the World's Fair, which is completely abandoned and ruined now, and nobody breaks anything down in Gotham. And sure as shit, the Joker's there, and he's got this uh, robot woman that cuts up baloney, and he's picking things off her face, and he's having a great time. He's got a little dog. And he's basically like, you got to help me, Mr. J. Keep me alive through all this stuff. And Joker's like, of course I will. And then he kind of offends him at the end. I forget what he does to say him. And he's like, oh, I'm going to put a smile on that face. And you're like, okay, He keeps cool. pushing him, and that freaks me out. Because, like, old people, yeah, don't you touch can't the push. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, the other way around. I yeah. thought you were talking about how he's pushing the Joker. No, no. no he, he, don't push he, old people either. Yeah, because they fall over. They break hips real easy. That's pretty right, safe right, for well. this episode. 
Um, Batman goes to Andrea's apartment. Andrea's apartment. It's so weird knowing Andrea Renee and then not wanting to say Andra, but they, you know, they do it here. So we're, from here on out, we're just calling her Andrea. So because I'm more worried about getting in trouble with Andrea Renee when I mispronounce her name because this game, re, this movie reprogrammed me. Scary. They go to Batman goes to Andrea's apartment. He's like, you know, the fucking photo. Like, who? What's going on here? And she's like, ah, oh, I don't fucking know anything. And he's like, ah, fuck. And she, he leaves, but she also makes it clear that she knows he's Batman. Yeah, she figured this out. She, she saw him at the grave site. Grave. Right, 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 and right, right. Then she ran over to where he was and realized he was standing next to the Wayne's grave site and was like, ah, yeah. two and three. It makes five. You know what I mean? Totally. Uh, from there, uh, Andrea is like, I'm going to go kill the old man, Abe Vigoda. And she goes to his apartment <laughs> as the phantasm. And she's like, Abe Vigoda, you, you, the time has come. You got to fucking die or whatever. And she moves the thing. And guess what? He's been Joker gassed or Joker, Joker toxin or whatever. You got a big old grin. And there's a little camera. Very scary. And Joker's like, oh, you're not who I thought you'd be. Because, of course, you know, they thought Batman was crazy. Oh, you're not who I thought you'd be. Um, Hey, I'm still going to kill you. And so he, he, the phantasm runs away. The place explodes. Um, the way you look, though, is loose. really freaky looking. Like the... He's just like, he looked fucking really scary looking. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He looked real scary. Looking. And he did look like this? No, that's Einstein. That's oh, different. Damn it, dude. Oh, See, uh, every once in a while, Nick, I don't know where you're going. It's like, I know it's one of five places, but yeah. when, I, when I choose the wrong one, it always surprises me. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for being you. Dip it toes. Uh, from there, Phantasm and Batman get confronted by each other. I think they might fight a little bit. I can't remember. But before too long, Phantasm smokes it out, and the cops show up, and they're like, Batman, you're under fucking arrest. Like, we are onto your shit. And he's like, ah, fuck, they're onto my shit. And so, like, they pull the guns, and he runs at one point, and they chase him, and then he runs again. This is when he falls really awkwardly. He jumps and falls. <laughs> He eventually runs into a construction site and they they show up and they're doing the hut, 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 like little fucking SWAT team things. They surround the fucking place. Uh, and Batman's like, I'm in over my head here. This sucks. And uh, they start, the one guy just starts shooting the fucking place up, a giant explosion. But looks like, oh man, why'd you do that? Even though we had no fucking idea how we're going to catch Batman. Uh, you go back in, Batman's bleeding out the mouth and he's all fucked up and cut up and shit in there. He's like, oh, I'm in over my head on this one. And so what he does is he takes his grappling hook and he shoots it at the helicopter and wraps it around that thing, right? And then it starts retracting with Batman flying out. And the cops are like, there he is, light him up. And, like, bruh, 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 bruh. and they're just like, bruh, bruh, bruh. everything they got. You know I mean? They're fucking like, we are going to kill Batman tonight. <laughs> and <laughs> seemingly with no concern to the helicopter, no, no, they were so much like, fuck it. If we got to take it down and take out Batman, we're all in. Um, and so it turns out it was just one of the hobby horses, right? Where you you do your lumber work. Where Kevin has these the yeah, seesaw. Like, how did he? How did he it's pull this shit off? <laughs> like sawhorse. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you. How on earth did Batman pull this shit off? Like, you know what, what I mean? Because he's good. What a master. It's more the thing, yeah, that he just like jumps off the construction site in the one shot and just like lands. And you're like, oh my god, yeah. how did the, you have no cape or anything to break your ball? Uh, and that's just Bruce Wayne in a Batman costume running through the streets, bleeding real bad. You know? Why would the Cops cape break him? his fall? You mean like to slow, slow him, him down? down. Or, yeah, okay, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, you know, so he just doesn't fucking plummet like a human body five stories. Uh, he's fucked up real bad. He's running. Cops are chasing him. They're on his thing, and he keeps looking he's over his shoulder. Like, Hide your fucking face, Bruce. He's Hide terrified. your fucking face. Eventually, though, Andrea's there, and he's like, and Andrea. And she's like, get in the fucking car, idiot. They peel out. They still see the car. The cops see the car. Like, oh, who's rocking nice ass red convertible is that? No, it doesn't matter to us. She I know, drives them back to the vintage Ferrari that there's like three right, in the world we can right, easily that only the out. three oh. richest kings could have. Yeah, and clearly there's someone in the in the front seat that has red hair. And this could uh, be too hard, Harvey Bullock. They drive back to Wayne Manor. I think this is where we the other flashback of the thing I already covered. Um, when we come out of it, they have a conversation, Bruce and Andrea, of like, oh, dad, daddy's the phantasm. Daddy's come and he's exacting all his revenge. We had to live, you know, forever in the Mediterranean. These people never stopped hunting us and now we're turning around hunting them since we, they ruined our lives or whatever. Uh, then Batman and her start fucking and Alfred walks back in. He's like, oh, does the Grandpa Simpson? He leaves again. Um, then, you know, like, they wake up in the morning. Uh, she's in his shirt, which is always a good look. Uh, and she's like, all right, I got to go do a few things. I'll see you later, right? We'll try this again because we're going to fix it and there's no more secrets. And he's like, great, no more secrets. I'm very proud. And she leaves and he sits down and he's like, I, Alfred's like, what does this mean for your alter ego? And he's like, you know what, Alfred? It means cream cheese and sunshine. And then he looks down at a photo and he's like, but wait. <laughs> <laughs> and he sees the Joker and he draws the one line Nick. And what does he do? <gasps> Martha. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 
it as it would turn so out cheesy it was just like so weird yeah. like yeah, this would have blown my mind uh back in the day and i'm sure it did but now it's just like the the impact of it is so bizarre and weird yeah uh he figures out his joker uh joker meanwhile goes to arthur reeves and is like putting the pressure and screws to him right or whatever asking for a bunch of what's he even asking for what's he asking him for i don't remember what his motivation is to shake down reeves but he goes there and gives him a hard time uh and then it looks like he tickles him but it turns out that no he gave him some kind of injection of joker serum or whatever because then we catch up with arthur in the, the hospital where the doctors you're a doctor in gotham city Somebody can't stop laughing and they're going to die. And this fucking guy's bedside manner is to come in and be like, Mr. Reeves, please, please, be please cool. stop. Yeah, he also I, knows he refers to it as the toxin. Yeah. Which is, you know, it's, it's Joker weird. toxin. So you've dealt with this yeah. before. You know what it is. Come on, be a professional. Or he does not be a professional. Exactly. They finally slow him down a bit or whatever. And they're like, all right, fuck, we're going to leave. But you really got to sort this out on yourself, man. You know what I mean? Let this shit get out of your system. Uh, they leave. And then sure as shit, Batman shows up. Batman's like, ah, hello. <laughs> He's like, oh, no. And he starts laughing really hard there. And uh, yeah, this is where he keeps up with... Uh, He's like, when's the last time you saw daddy? And he's like, I haven't seen talk to daddy in years. It was when uh, I was running for my election campaign. I hit up daddy for money and he didn't help. He couldn't help me. And he's like, oh, so you sold him out to the mob or whatever. And he's like, yeah. And it's like, okay, um, this is then. Oh, Batman then goes. Yeah, yeah. Right. Batman goes to Andrea's apartment <laughs> and the phone rings and it's the Joker. And he's like. I, I'm still unclear if Joker knows he's talking to Batman or if he thinks he's talking to the Phantasm. No, I think he's, he thinks he's talking to Batman. Okay. And like, he blows this time, I'm going to get you. Because right. I'm going to send my drone at you. You know what I mean? I right. don't know why yeah, that yeah, would yeah. work. Batman literally it's, shoots the drone out of the sky when it's, like it's 100 big, feet it's a away. Big with, a, with a big bomb on it. Yeah, but I mean, he was like, you can't jump out of the window this time. First of all, he could have. He could have very yeah. easily jumped out and been fine. Second of all, it just it was a dumb plan. Um, so yeah, the thing blows up, uh, and then we get a flashback, right, of Andrea in fucking the Mediterranean, just eating olives like they're going out of style. She shows up at the house, and the <laughs> Joker, the Joker is leaving in his human disguise, and she's like, oh no, he paid you, and she walks in, and we just hear, ah, and it was like, that was it, that, daddy's dead, uh, Joker had killed him before he was even the Joker or whatever okay this is now set it all in motion that we know what's going on so now we go to the world's fairgrounds where andrea shows up to fuck up the joker joker of course knows it's her they battle it's like i was talking earlier where she gets hit with the, the baloney which i thought was funny he uses his uh you know uh, flower to spray and melt her metal hand so she's just running around a leotard um eventually the battle goes from inside to outside where joker turns on a giant fan because fan technology was huge at the world's fair Always huge awesome. Always Huge. Is. Well, they were like, we don't have air conditioning for the outside, so let's make a giant turbine. I think it was, yeah, yeah it was like a jet I, turbine. I also do want to, I do want to say yeah, that the, the sort of androids at the World's Fair really reminded me of Robin Williams in Bicentennial Man. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right. It's a similar yeah. design. Yeah, yeah it's it's kind fake. of that um, what the like fifties. No, yeah, I mean that's kind of the same inspiration. I feel like. There's an album from Queen, Queen that has that same robot design. It's yeah. a cool mm -hmm. design. Um, Batman, sh Andrea's about to get sucked into the thing. She's holding on to a, flag a flagpole. Uh, Batman shows up on his bat cycle, and he's like, oh, Andrea. And so he rides over there, and then he just does a cool sick jump, and then he jumps off the motorcycle, uh, grabbing her but kicking the motorcycle into the fan or the jet. It explodes. That stops it. They he comes down with Andrea. And he's like, "You're the phantasm." She's like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Just go yeah. away. Let me do this, and we'll, f you know, you've crossed the line." She's like, "He's crossed the line, and they took everything from us, and I need vengeance." And he's like, "Vengeance won't work." And she's like, "Aren't you vengeance?" And it's like, "It doesn't matter. Just go away. All right. Let me f take care of this." And I was like, really, really worried that several pieces of shrapnel were just going to crush all of them when the motorcycle, sure. like, when sure, it sure, fell sure. down, and they're they're both there, and like giant pieces of like mechanical metal just like hit the ground. I really thought yeah. they were both done terrifying. Uh, she's like, "Fine, she'll leave." Uh, Batman chases Joker in into like a diorama of Gotham City so we get some Godzilla like uh, kaiju battles here where they're like up there and Joker actually really funnily is walking around with, like the uh, a building top on his head so like you see him in one frame just like yeah. creep in the background I was <laughs> like that's fuck? good I like that a lot I, like I, I did enjoy the the fight on the diorama 
Fun yeah, it was light. fun, right? Why not? Why not have something a little visually interesting for this? At that least that's very yeah. cool. This is when they send a little like he, it's almost like Batman's King Kong, and they send the biplanes at Batman. They're cutting him up, and he's got to get him in his cave and smash him real good. Uh, eventually, though, uh, Joker reveals his plan of like, listen, I've set a bomb. There's tunnels all over this fucking thing. It's all gonna go up. Fuck you. And he runs away. And Batman's like, oh no, fuck you. And so Batman chases him. And they get outside, and Joker has a jetpack. Also, at one point, Batman fucking gets a great punch on Joker and knocks out one of his teeth. Uh, Joker puts on a jetpack. And he's like, Sayonara, sucker. And Batman's like, not so fast. And so he's flying away, but then Batman jumps on him, and then they're going all over the place and hitting the ground and going in like a Joker's like, you know, if you do this, you're going to, you, you die. We both die. If you just let me get away, one of us lives. And Batman goes, whatever it takes. And they get smashed into the ground. And Joker's like, well, this fucking sucks. And uh, he's but like, also, why there. would Batman be like, oh, okay, you're right. You get to live. I'll see you yeah, later. Exactly. You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh at this point andrea shows back up i forgot i think joker gets the upper hand for a second but then she, she shows up to make sure that doesn't fucking happen and batman's like listen andrea like this whole place is gonna fucking blow we gotta get out of here and she's like no he doesn't get a, get, get away for, with this and i'll end it all here or whatever kind of thing she's like goodbye my love she doesn't say bruce of course because joker said goodbye my love and then like the explosion start joker laughs uh, maniacally as all of it starts going to explosion and all this different shit um they disappear into smoke um bruce gets out through tunnels and like the sewers or whatever um then it's bruce sad in the cave and alfred's like oh man like this sucks but it's like cool that you're alive and that you don't slip into the abyss she was in the abyss you walk that line every night and you haven't uh given in the abyss so that's great you're still good and he's like yeah, you know what? I guess I and he looks over and he sees this glimmer of hope in the cave, right? And he runs over there and it's the locket that he had seen in the her apartment earlier that I forgot to talk about. Sorry, that he'd seen it. So it's like, oh my God, she must have survived and brought this locket here. This is somewhat great news, I guess. I don't know. How did anybody survive? How does the smoke work? Doesn't matter. Uh, then we get <laughs> also, he's also wondering, like, how did fucking Catwoman survive in the other movie? Like, how is yeah, it? Yeah, totally. Uh, <laughs> then there's a party on a boat. Maybe and... all this is in my head. <laughs> <laughs> there's a party on a boat and a drunk guy comes outside to flirt with the woman outside and it's Andrea and he asks her one question I forget and she gives a weird answer he's like uh? and it's like oh she's like, I'm always alone and he's like okay I'm gonna go All right. elsewhere That's great. Yeah, this yeah. one not worth it not and then uh, it. it's the it's Batman back on top of the city and they turn on the bat signal because guess what everybody even though there's absolutely no proof uh, every, Batman's cleared of all charges they know he Classic wasn't killing story. the mobsters yeah. every time Batman, uh, also, uh, 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 I guess maybe in the off time, Reeves confessed everything. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't also, know does this mean know. that does this mean that Andrea killed the Joker? Did she succeed? Well, no, the multiple I mean, seasons of uh, the multiple seasons yeah. of uh, Batman the Animated Series would tell you no. Yeah. So what did failed. she do? She just she just disappeared and was like, "I'm gonna I kill mean, you." And he's like, "No." That was a like, college oh, try. You know what I mean? She was. Done I guess at that so. Point. Well, yeah, so. she disappeared him though. She got a left. It doesn't matter. Yeah, who knows? Seven syllables in the middle. You'll need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your review in haiku form, just like Briar Rabbit did. Angel of Death's here. Vengeance blackens the soul, sir. Love life up in smoke marco baron says andy loves bruce wayne andy kills the bad guys but andy kills the ants yeah he does put it on his wikipedia page ladies and gentlemen that's what he's gonna be known for <laughs> jules bonato says movie slaps is true i get why nick likes batman it's called jujitsu that's right. <laughs> That's, That's right. Just Good just one. to be clear, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu versus normal Jiu Jitsu very different. Very different. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I think he was referring specifically to Japanese Jiu Jitsu because they incorporate some more strength. I think they just call it regular Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, they just call it Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Jasic says, "Is my shirt too big?" Or that guy makes my skin crawl. Phantasm kicks ass. That, that was, was a weird, weird line. line. That was very a weird, weird line. line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> forgot about that part. Forgot about that part. All right, let's let's do all of the the rag babble gob guys, whatever the fuck they're called. Andy, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Just do the ragu bagu song, and that can encompass everyone we didn't get to. 
Ragu. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Batcast Inside a Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Andy, Kevin, who hurt himself as I said his name, Nick Scarpino, and of course, Tim Geddes. This is where we do a whole bunch of different things in the Batman cinematic universe. Of course, we had a show called Rag Guys Talk Bad Guys, where we ranked villains. Now we have that along with a bunch of others. So Let's start, as we always do, with Gotham's finest. The secret delights. Does anyone have a secret delight, delight they'd like to call I it? For really, I want to bring attention to the previous secret delights, which include the shocking Russian disguise for Catwoman with a shout-out uh-huh. to Batman's incredibly tiny nipples from 66, yep. oh, the right. Prince soundtrack from 89, and the right. Penguin Army from Batman Returns. This is one of these favorite podcasts. What? Podcast. No, <laughs> hold on a second. The, I, I like the, uh, the uh, motorcycle designs for both the motorcycle that Batman jumps on when he's Bruce Wayne <laughs> and the 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 bat cycle that he pulls out. I think those are both bitchin' looking I'll, motorcycles. The bat cycle is dope. I like Alfred's uh mustache before turn before he turned gray. Oh. Yeah, we'll do that. Alfred's yeah. hair and the bat cycle. Okay. The bitchin' I'm bat putting, cycle. I'm putting I, the one I put in there. I, so I have motorcycle designs by Kevin. Uh, then I have for and then the Alfred uh, mustache for Andy. And then for me it was the no and the the no <laughs> when he sees the Joker <laughs> smile. <laughs> no. Yeah, I like that a lot. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Kevin Conroy's exactly. like, I didn't get all of that, Andrew. Exactly. Uh, Andre, do you want me to do it again? They're like, no, no, that's fine. You, you see that guys? Yeah. That's pretty fucking cool looking. That's a dope ass thing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Batmobile we already did best bat suit currently the number one best bat suit in the Batman cinematic universe is Batman Returns followed by 89 Batman followed by 66 bat suit where do we want to put Batman Mask of the Phantasm's bat suit it's a hard I one vote, I vote number one I love the Batman Returns thing and I love how it is but I think the Batman uh, bat suit from the animated series slash Phantasm is so iconic and I love the fact that it can go between being fully black to being that black and blue I Mm -hmm. love the gray I love the symbol I love the simplicity of it it would never work in a movie obviously but I think for uh, an animated series it's so fucking good yeah I'm, I'm with you I give it number one because I think that every element about it is iconically Batman, whether it's yeah. the, yeah, that's the a great arm bits it. having the kind of like little sharp shit on it, like the colors of it. Yeah. Like even if you just looked at those colors, like the iconography, you know it's Batman. And the cow, the the colors of the, the cape and all that stuff, it's like this is this is a dope ass Batman. I agree. I agree. That's a great way to put it. Everything's I iconic. Concur. I concur. That's yeah. a new number one, then, ladies and gentlemen. Phantasm takes best bat suit. Uh, while we're here, let's get into Ragu Bagu, aka Ragu Roga, uh, where we rank the Batman's rogue gallery. Uh, right now, we have it at number one, eighty-nine, Batman the Joker. Number two, Batman Returns, Max Penguin and the Cat. And number six, or I'm sorry, number three, sixty-six, Catwoman, Riddler, Joker, and Penguin. Where do we want to put Phantasm and Joker? I this think that's the bottom for me. At the bottom. Oh, oh, I really, I really like this one. I, I was gonna say we should put it on the top. I think Joker's kind of forced into this in a in yeah, a way that like I, I get it and it works, but it's like and it's just it's a weird thing where he's introduced late into this and it's like his introduction and like the way that they play it out makes it feel like a TV show more than a movie. Mm, I agree. So I, I, yeah, I, I, I felt like. I, Go ahead, Kev. I was gonna say his introduction kind of i like the fact that he wasn't the main villain and brought up and then added to the group and he's in that picture you know i know that's cheesy but like the fact that like all the pieces were there but we needed batman to put them together for us to be like oh look at that so cool joker i just love mark hamill's joker i think just as a joker he should rank high highly and i think this is probably the only time he's this is the only time we're talking mark yeah. hamill joker right yeah that's I mean, I would point. say I, I would put uh, him. Well, for the I record, just, I do have an upcoming new segment called Jokers. Jokers. Great. Wild. So great. we're going to rank Jokers there, too. So you don't feel like you have to get it all out of your system here. Because okay. my thought, my initial thought of this was I would have put this at number two. So below Joker 89 and above Batman Returns. I would, that's where I would put it, too. Just because I think I feel like Hamill's Joker is just so perfect for the animated property and almost perfect for like just across the board. I think he's almost number one. I put him at number two. And, uh, the thing is, you know, I, of course, I think Hamill executes Joker. Well, I just don't think Joker or Phantasm are. They're just, not particularly compelling at all. Yeah. No, but Phantasm I also wrote Andrea into that where I like this du- duality of her playing Bruce and Batman and walking those lines and going between them. I'll put a number I two find that. I find that struggle uh, character line more interesting than what mm-hmm. we saw in returns, which I also enjoyed. None of these are bad, but yeah. 
Okay, so number two seems like we're all fine with Yeah, don't turn a no into a yes. Or then, a yes a no. Ragu Alf Alf, where we rank all the Alfreds in the Batman Cinematic Universe. Currently, number one, 89's Batman. Uh, number two, Batman Returns. Number three, the 66 Alfred. I think far and away, this is number one Alfred. Oh, my God. So far. This one's actually an Alfred. I like it. For I the first time. No reasons to argue. Time for Joker's Wild, where we rank all the Jokers in the Batman Universe. Currently, it's number one, Jack Nicholson. Where do we want to put Mark Hamill? And what I'll put out there, is I love Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill is honestly probably, I mean, arguably the best Joker of all time. What I'd like to ask on the mercy of the court here is that we consider this performance, this Joker of this movie, rather than his entire body of work, which I know is very hard to do. I put him at number two. I number one, case. man. Jack, Jack Nicholson's case. Joker is the most overrated thing about any Batman movie ever. While I wholeheartedly disagree with Tim, I would also put him <laughs> number one. So, okay, I'm voting two. Nick's two. You guys are one. Andy, you're, you have to make your vote one or two. Um, I would put him at two underneath Nicholson. There Booyah. it is. Booyah. Joker's Booyah. Wild uh, debut segment. Jack Nicholson, number one, number two. And then another brand new segment, ladies and gentlemen. Great. Bell of the Batman, <laughs> where we rank Batman's love interest in each one of the movies. Uh, we have not done this. So we have Vicky Vale, we have Catwoman, and then now we have Phantasm. Where do you want to put them all? Hmm. Catwoman, then Andrea, then Vicky Vale. I think it's Vicky. V- oh, hold on. I, I think it's. Wait, which cat? So, Andrea, uh, Vicky Vale, Catwoman. The, remember, oh, there's shit. two Catwoman. Yeah, the Russian, Russian yeah. Catwoman. I think we're putting fourth. No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah definitely. Well, that's done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I feel like Vicky Vale should be number one. Andrea would be number one. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Andrea one. Vicky Whale, two, then... Vicky Whale. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. All right, come on. Vicky Whale, like Van Hoyland. Uh, and the I, other one is... I, I, Catwoman is three because she's crazy. Yeah, the cow. I, I just think, of, okay, if you're going to talk about the the sort of... The femme fatales of the entrepreneurs, I feel like the relationship, the chemistry between the actors is super important. And sure. I just feel like the Basinger, Keaton had really good chemistry. I think I just, I liked them in those dinner scenes. I liked that. that sure, I, I mean, agree with that. One of my all time favorite scenes ever is that when she comes in and they have that candid conversation where she's like, are we going to fucking give this a shot? And he's like, eh. Yeah, it is I'm really good. good. Batman. So I would put Vicky Vale probably at number one. Um, the Andrea stuff in this it was fine, but it just sort of, I don't know. It just feels like it's 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 a little dumbed down for kids, and it doesn't have quite the development that I wanted. You know what? You've changed my mind. I'm putting Vicky at number one on my list too. No okay. Y'all are insane. Andy, and what did Selena you say? Kyle's just, I think. Uh, I think we're just. Are, are, it sounds like we're just arguing one and two. Yeah. Right. Number I, three I, is Catwoman I, I, Returns. I, I number four. Cat- I put number two. Who are you putting number two? Um. Uh. Andrea. Okay, so then, yeah, the votes would be then. All right, so the bell of the Batman in this new segment is Vicky Vale, 89, uh, number one, Andrea Phantasm, Catwoman Returns, Russian Catwoman, 66. Thank you for these Russian podcasts within a podcast within a podcast. <laughs> uh, next, oh, no, now it's time to rank the Batman theatrical releases. Oh, oh so fuck, close. Fuck, that didn't work. God damn it. Give me one so second, close, sorry. So close. Andy made some fancy little uh, visuals yeah, for us now. Uh, that was my bad. There it is, boom. Number Ooh. one. That worked really well. Number one, we have Batman 89. Number two, we have Batman Returns. Number three, Batman 66. Where do we put this? I put this above Returns, maybe, or, or above 66 for sure. I would say for sure above 66 because it's, oh, it's a sure. well made, quickly paced movie. Um, I can't put it above 89 because I just kind of found part. I was just not as interested. It's not very engaging just because of, of its age, I think. Um, a tough one for me. I don't know. I'd put it two. I probably put it number two, actually. Andy, I, what do you say? A, I, I, I don't know if this goes two or three for me. Um, oh, over I, returns. I, I personally, I, I, I vote three. I say it's Batman sixty six at the bottom. Phantasm returns eighty nine. With this list, it's number one for me. Like, yeah, so, it, so easily. it's also number one for me as well. Mm. So then, let's see the so vote. Who thinks it's better than sixty six? Raise your hand. Everyone who thinks it's better than Returns, raise your hand. Actually, you know what? I don't think it is. So then it's oh, who thinks it's better than 89? Raise your hand. So there we go. Number one, Batman 89. Number two, Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Number three, Batman Returns. And number four, Batman 66. Later this week, we're doing Annabelle for the Conjuring Cinematic Universe in review. And then next week, we're coming back. Batman Forever, baby. 
And they say, no, that's the wrong one. No. What is it? Going? <laughs> and I wrote it. Please stop. I don't know what you guys think you're saying. You're not. Baby. Fuck, I can't wait, dude. I'm in. Number so one. I'm in forever. Same bad time, same bad channel. I'm both Batman and Bruce Wayne. So I 